네, 안녕하세요. 네, 유정민입니다. 잘 들리십니까? 제가 화면 공유를 먼저 띄워놓고 시작을 하겠습니다. 그래서 잘 보이시나요? 네. 예, 안녕하세요. 저 연세대학교 문과대학 조교수리는 류정민이라고 합니다. 그 먼저 오늘 저 같이 연구 처음부터 진행한 그 동학이 있는데 그 고려대학교의 이창희 선생인데 오늘 일단 제가 먼저 발표 제가 발표를 하는 걸로 하겠습니다. 제가 지금 서울에 있습니다. 어, 다들 앞에서 김바로 선생님하고 두분다 소개를 하셔서 저도 간단히 소개를 드리겠습니다. 어떻게 하다가 이거를 하게 됐는지. 그 저는 전공이 한국 문학입니다. 전근대 문학이고 그시 전공이었고요. 그래서 한문학을 전공을 하면서 학부와 석사를 마쳤습니다. 그런데 그 박사를 미국으로 가게 되면서 한 10년 전쯤에 디지털 인문학이라는 것을 처음 접하게 되었었어요. 정말 역사학자들 입장에서 그때 역사학과 수업을 들으면서 인문학자들 입장에서 전자문화 지도하고 주로 네트워크 이두 가지를 어떻게 쓰고 그것을 위해서 우리가 그 여태까지 쌓아놓은 데이터를 어떻게 가공하는가 이런 것들을 배우면서 굉장히 재밌다고 생각을 했습니다. 그 텍스트를 시간과 공간에 이렇게 보이도록 또 분석 가능하게 만드는 것이 굉장히 재밌었는데 그 이후로 논문 쓰고 연구를 하다가 논문 쓰고 포닥하고 또 하느라 조금 끊어졌는데 연세대에 온 다음에 이제 계속 해보려고 이제 처음부터 다시 어 해보려고 노력을 하고 있습니다. 그래서 오늘 들으면서 아 많이 배우고 앞으로 그러고 싶다라는 생각도 되게 많이 했습니다. 그래서 좋은 자리에 소개해 주셔서 정말 감사드립니다. 이창현 선생님도 한국에 도, 다시 돌아와서 이제 같이 일을 하게 됐는데 이런 생각에 같이 동의를 하고 같이 열심히 데이터를 모으고 있습니다. 어 일단 그리고 제 아마 그 받으신 논문집에 제 논문이 없을 것 같은데 정말 죄송합니다. 제가 이 프로젝트를 시작한 건 굉장히 오래됐는데 여름에 막 너무너무 힘들어하면서 창희 씨랑 같이 하다가 결론이 잘안 나더라고요. 그 결론도 잘안 나고 제 스스로도 좀 너무 힘들고 그래서 논문을 계속 좀못 쓰고 있었어요. 그래서 일단 오늘 발표를 드리고 그 관련 자료를 추후에 공유해드리도록 하겠습니다. 또 많이 질의를 좀 해주십시오. 이 국제학술대회라서 음 제가 그 관계자님들께 영어로 발표를 한다고 말씀을 드렸었어요. 왜 그랬을까요? <웃음> 그래서 잘 보이십니까? 일단 예. 그래서 준비한 대로 영어로 발표를 하고 또 이렇게 섞어서 필요하시면 또 아, 하겠습니다. 그렇게 길지는 않습니다. 예. 해도 될까요? <laughs> so hello everyone and uh, thanks for inviting me to this wonderful conferences. I'm Jamie. Uh, as, uh, I'm working at Yonsei University as assistant professor. We have a co-presenter, Dr. Mr. Changi Lee from Korea University. Today on behalf of our team, project team, let me give a presentation. So Although we have started this project quite a while ago, uh, the, we spent many, a lot of sleepless nights to complete the data set and the analysis, but still in, it's in progress. Perhaps in a couple more months, I will do my best to conduct in-depth analysis and make a full paper. Thank you very much for your generous understanding. So the title for this paper today is analytical locality transforming all the documents to digital data so before we begin before we begin uh, let me start with the image of a travel sometimes the long journey can be very tough and the ship often encounter a kind of a kind of luck and even get shipwrecked through this course, the traveler experiences a lot of different landscapes, geographical and cultural realities. All these experiences let the traveler build a new identity over time, which is also constantly mutating into another new identity. Let me discuss further the formation of identity. Perhaps some of you love this book, Ship of Theseus. It raises a very interesting question of whether an object that has had all of its components replaced that remains fundamentally the same object. We can make several hypotheses. For example, the first, if one plank of this ship has been replaced, 
Is it still the same ship? In other case, if all of the planks have been replaced, is it still the same ship? And the third, suppose the removed pieces were stored in a warehouse, and after the century, technology was developed and enabled the parts to be reassembled into a ship. Is, is this reconstructed ship the original ship? So I want to ask a question of identity and culture and trans transformation. If the part of the ship was replaced under the umbrella of the same title, is the ship then it's the same ship. Does it contain the same identity over time? Is the, if the parts of it or all of the parts are mutating to another one. So how do we build our identity? I brought this question to ask if there is a famous world literary canon like Shakespeare, Du Fu, and which is fully developed and localized in Korea. Is it still the same original literary canon? The main character for this project is Tufu in Korean Tubo, focusing on how the great canon of Chinese or world history was transmitted, circulated, compiled, and printed over time. This paper calls all this reception-related business locality, which means how the foreign canonical literature was introduced to a different community and reshaped and given new identity. If we go back to this canal lock metaphor, we will trace the transmission and journey of a Dufu in tra traditional Korea, pre-modern Korea. And the following question would be, if some or all parts of were, or some parts of Dufu's poetry or some parts were replaced, changed, annotated, sometimes missing under the big umbrella of the great Dufu, is the new version of a Korean Dufu still the same original Dufu, if it ever existed? How can you identify the locality or yeah, Korean version of Dufu? I know it's a really, really big question. So today, I'd like, I have to say that we just take the first step, baby step, focusing on the transforming the old data, old document into machine readable. Data. So the question, basic question is that how the do for poetry published and circulated in Joseon Dynasty into machine readable data. So for this thread, for transforming the older documents into machine readable data, uh, we uh, set the three steps. First is our duty the, as a human, hu, person who do humanities. The first part is to be the determine the primary sources. It means a very serious, extensive and extensive and intensive archival research. We collected as many as major sources, and I think uh, it's important for this research. And then the and and through the bibliographic assessment, I've chosen the final text. And the second step is to transform this old text into data set. So this part entails designing data ontology, showing a way of showing the properties of target text and how they are related. It's basically the data ontology part. So main part, we spend lots of time, most of our time for this, this because we have lots of nodes and relational data. So it was very hard in the beginning. And the third, finally, we analyze and visualize by impl implementing the network and visualizing program. So we are working on this part, and yeah, I have lots of questions. <laughs> yeah. To determine the target text, I've conducted extensive archival research in and out of Seoul. So here is the example. The existing text of Dufu transmitted from traditional Korea are a lot, lot, a lot, thousands, because Dufu was considered one of the most important writing model and literary canon. So it was reprinted, reprinted compiled, and co hand, handwritten copied, and copied several times, so many times, from approximately 15th century to 19th century until still today. So for this research, I started from 18th century material because it was relatively transparent how this important canon was printed by the government in metamovable type and disseminated in prints and also in manuscript format. So I started from this. 
So among this, I, part I have a particular cho chosen uh, version from Yonsei University. There are two reasons I decided this version as a main text for this study. The first is a kind of a counterpart, local counterpart of the doc government project in Seoul. Once the government compiled and reprinted it in a matter of archive, made a, made a master copy, and they sent this master copy to local bureau, and the local authorities print, reprinted it in wood move wood blocks, which was very cheap and popular. So it was very it, it, very nice to compare the master copy and local counterpart. And the second reason is that this particular version has many, the Yonsei version has many paratextual elements. Notes from the anonymous readers and marks the symbols in different colors. And local printing technologies by local printer, printers, this, in this case, is woodblocks. So we can compare the metamovable type and woodblocks. So in a nutshell, this version of Dufu, to 18th century Dufu, contains a lot of interesting information of networks of interpretation. So we can see, visualize the layers of layers of readers interpretation, that practice of reading and reception. That means by analyzing this text, we can learn and visualize layers of local adaptation of a canon. So it's the main target and we can expand our research to another version and another period of time. So it's the starting point of this book. And data ontology part. <laughs> so now the question is how to transform these elements or paratextual layers into data. First of all, we have identified the elements of the text. For example, points in one page, maybe the first page, have these kinds of elements. They are lines, poetry lines, title, line, rhyme, and rhyme belong to certain rhyme families. On top of each page, it has the very extensive handwritten headnotes. And sometimes the under the title, there's handwritten title notes, and there are some various symbols attached papers, lots of traces done by the anonymous readers. So we identified some analytical, some elements we can analyze using this program. So to convert this data, we position them by class, property, and, and the by node and edges is, is the basic. The threat. In this Excel file, and each tab has some nodes and edges, relational data, and we can we can set up the classes and so put some properties. Yeah. So, in the second page, we will use to, to visualize this data set. We will we use the Neo4j. So to input this data set to Neo4j, we had to make some query. So it's the relationship query. So to match this uh, target and then create this research. It's a basic query system. And inside the WebJ, we need additional little bit in-depth query to get the retrieved the research. So overall, so far, we have 14,913 knots and 17,913 edges. Uh, is from 777 poems in two books. It's our data set. So, in the third part, visualization and analysis, I put some parentheses because it's still ongoing. So still, I'm in. I'm a little bit stuck in this process because it's really hard to get a meaningful research for, yeah, from from my perspective. So. Yes, yeah, so let me show what we have today and ask for your comments and suggestions. So, um, so far, yeah, we, so far we input all the data set into Nail4j and the so, query questions and queries. So, first part, first sample is of visualization analysis. The reason, uh, the first sample is that we retrieve the poems by rhyme family. For example, each poem uses certain rhyme and certain rhyme belong to a rhyme family. So we, if we run on the Neo4j, the Neo4j aggregate the poems by rhyme family. For example, for example, this part 
this points, the purple is poem titles, so 777 poems. It, it, among 77 poems, these poems share this particular rhymes, this kind of, yeah, we share that we can get from the neo So from, from this uh, yeah, implementation, we can visually notice that which rhyme has a lot of poems that share this particular rhyme. That's the very, very simple result. So Ryan family is 28 Ryan families in this poem is in, in this entire book use the 28 nine families whole whole number of poem is 777 and is aggregated by Ryan family. And second example is that second example is that the links between Ryan family and the particular poem and the line and particular rhymes. For example, this version has just the rhyme family and rhyme. And this rhyme, family, which poem has the rhyme family and line? And so which lines, hang, line phrases share this rhyme family and rhyme? So visually, we can notice that this poem and this, this phrases has this rhyme that belong to this rhyme frame. It's the second, yeah, Second, second visualization. So this particular form, so sorry, is a little bit blurred. Has this rhyme and this, which belong to this rhyme family, and this particular line has this rhyme family. The second visualization. And third visualization, I add one more, is the relationship between the rhyme family and rhyme and work and praises. It uh, we put all the uh, everything here. So this part has this. Yes, similar, but I add one more. So this part is a, oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. This part, so the, the, the direction of the arrow doesn't mean that much, but it has a relationship with this, this poems and the rhyme, a relation between the poems and the line and the rhyme family and lines. It's a basic sample, it's a third sample. So displaying 40 nodes and 39, 39 relationships. Basically, so far we can implement the many, repeat this, this one and put different query data. So we have basic, my question is that we have a stop here so far because I feel rather frustrated because mainly it was not easy to make a query. It was difficult, yeah, indeed. But at the same time, using this kind of visualization, what kind of meaningful conclusions we can draw? So this program aggregated points or those by query, such as numbers of points that share the same rhyme family or rhyme. But we can, yeah, we can visually, we can notice that certain poem has this certain kind of rhyme. The certain rhyme has a lot of, which rhyme has more, yeah, more points that has this particular rhymes. But can you more analyze from a different perspective? So, to get the, in order to get more important or a little bit more meaningful analysis, do we have to implement another network program? That was my question. And second question is that this data set are they retrieved from one single text. So, I'm, but if this text is also in the middle of the web of the different network, yeah, from 15th century to 20th century, is inside very large number of circulation. So to identify the very characteristics of this particular text, I think I have to compare this one to another one. That means the networks, uh, analyze the networks between the text. So how the each points are compiled and circulated. If, if, so, so perhaps I am trying to use another network analysis data for to compare, to identify this text in the web of the big uh, uh, texture circulation. So yeah, that's my, yeah, work so far. So it's very basic. So if you have any suggestions and questions, please let me know.